Now the next tool we're going to be using is the uh, rectangle marquee tool, uh, rectangular sorry, uh, you can select that on the left hand side at the top. Now this tool is really basic and simple, uh, you can make shapes from it and stuff like that. Um, depending on the shape that you're trying to uh, select or if you're making a selection in an image depending on the shape of the object that you're trying to select. Um, now if we go to control and deselect, now there's a few things that you can do with this um, tool. Uh, if we go and drag out, if you hold down the space bar you can position uh, your selection box or shape wherever you want to after once you've um, stopped clicking and taking your hand off the spacebar um, obviously you can't move it again like that now there is other processes that if we hold down the shift uh, we can add to the selection if we hold down the alt we can take away from the selection like that and then also what you can do is press ctrl and t to free transform the selection now it's free transforming the shape that you've just selected um, that is encompassing um, if we go back again and then we right click and then we go transform selection uh, it's going to transform the selection that it's got and not the shape and then there's a load of things you can do you can right click and then you can distort skew or rotate or whatever you want to do and this helps create shapes that you can actually normally uh, get from the other tools um, so let's go back on that one deselect um, also the style you can change the style to fixed ratio or fixed size so you can play around with them uh, they're very useful uh, the next um, tool which is underneath the original tool that I'm just explaining uh, there's loads of different ones the elliptical marquee tool which is exactly the same as the rectangular marquee tool but obviously in a circle shape or an oval um, you can create different things now if you hold down the shift you can create a perfect circle like that and you'll have all the same options as the previous tool um, so deselect the next one is the single row marquee tool and the next one is the single column marquee tool now they're very similar um, just one thing different and you'll know why so if you go and do that uh, and you can basically it's uh, showing you the row and if we zoom in you can right click you can go to um, you got all different options here. You go to fill. Let's go fill with a different color. Okay. Okay. And then deselect. Now, if you if we scroll in, and it's getting pretty funky here. Um, what it's done is made a single selection of one pixel column. No, sorry, row. Sorry. Um, the column is the next tool that you can select which is exactly the same but just in a column uh, now if you obviously did want to select something like into it you can go and get the other tool the marquee tool and select it or whatever you want we can delete columns of pixels and stuff like that which comes in very uh, useful sometimes um, I use these tools all the time um, but they're, they're pretty quick they're pretty easy to use um, so obviously as I said you want to use it with different and other techniques and styles and other tools uh, to get your selections so that's just uh, some of the best ways uh, to select and uh, on to the next uh, selection process The next selection tool we're going to be working on is the lasso tool. Now the lasso tool is uh, pretty good but I hardly work on it because I hardly need uh, to use it. Uh, so you can go and select that in the top left hand corner. Uh, there is a bunch uh, of them, I'm going to go through them. Uh, the lasso tool in itself is a 
free form selection tool you can create whatever you want uh, whatever selection you want depending on how steady your hand is or if you have a graphics tablet it's much simpler much easier to use than a mouse um, and it makes a great selection now you can create objects with this um, but it's not so great on the whole selection process I'd say um, it's not one of my favorites at least so we go control and D to deselect uh, great option now don't forget the keyboard shortcut um, we're going to go on to the next one, which is the sorry, I can hardly say this word polygonal lasso tool. Um, this one uh, creates points, so just creates straight lines. Um, but with this one, it's kind of like the pen tool, but it doesn't give you the option of creating anchor points, and then you can't uh, edit them points, um, which is it's okay. It's pretty um, it's pretty good. Um, for creating but obviously not that great for uh, if you're going around a circle also with this tool here if you uh, wanted to sometimes it's hard to get to the actual point to make the selection so you can just double click and it'll automatically make that selection uh, for you it'll connect the lines up at the end um, Another one I don't uh, normally work in because the pictures I need to make selections mostly have curves and stuff like that. Not really called for straight lines, depending on your picture at the time, obviously. Um, the next one we're going to be working on is the magnetic lasso tool, which is great. I normally I quite use this tool quite often. Um, this tool, um, you have a bunch of options at the top, uh, width, contrast, frequency. Now if we go and click around it, uh, it'll make a pretty good selection, it'll stick to the black, it's uh, trying to decide uh, what you're trying to select, so it'll stick onto that uh, colour. And then when we get to the end, click that, like that, and it's made a pretty good selection. As I said, uh, when you get to the end, if you can't make uh, to connect the last dots up, you can just double click and it'll automatically connect up for you. Um, now the width, um, if I just deselect that. Now if we go and uh, play with the width, now what the width does is how far you can get away from the actual thing you're trying to select. So if I go and do this, and if I go all the way over here, it's going to start selecting that now it's not going to select over 10 um, pixels outside uh, the black uh, dot right here so if I just go and deselect that again and now the contrast is basically depending on how well it contrasts with the background the black and white obviously huge contrast so you can set that higher if it's not then you need to set it lower um, depending on your contrast at the time and then the frequency is basically the same uh, kind of thing it's just what it does it tells you uh, how many points you want to create and what's the distance so if I just go around this you can see it's making points at certain uh, times certain intervals now you can change this I normally keep it at 57 or around 50 depending on how many points you want to make and at what times um, which is pretty good so it's it's a pretty good tool in general um, obviously it does make some mistakes but you really have to have a steady hand going around the edge um, just going around the edge keep as close to the edge as it is trying to work out uh, what you are trying to select you can't just go off course and later try and select it you've got to keep a relevant uh, side to the edge that you're trying to select so I'll just quickly go around and there you go it's made a perfect selection and then from there you can right click and then go to layer via copy layer via cut and it'll cut the object and that's it there now obviously as I said with all selection uh, processes don't just stick with one selection process that is not what you want to do you want to uh, mix between them 
uh, get a feel for them and then you want to intermix them with each other to get the best selection uh, process now if you're working on like a main picture and there's a lot going on in the background as I'm working on one color backgrounds at the moment uh, with you but if you're working on a very heavy background lots of things going on lots of contrasts and you know things going on um, it's gonna make the selection pretty hard so that's why you want to intermix the selection processes with all different things and just have a go at it and even if it doesn't work with that picture uh, when you mix them try other combinations uh, there's loads out there and um, you might have to play around with different settings to try and get the better selection there's loads of videos on YouTube on how to get a better selection in a very versatile background uh, trying to get an image out of a uh, very you know packed background so once you've done that that's mostly all the selection processes uh, there's a few more um, but they're not as good as uh, these processes that I've shown you uh, so have a go at them try and master them um, see if it helps and uh, yeah that is all for today and I'll see you in my next video um, also I did want to say that I put a link to my shop yes I have a brand new uh, shop out selling t-shirts I design a uh, things to put on shirts so my shop is going to be in the description bar go check it out I've got like four designs so far on there there's loads more to create I've just got to get the time to make them and then post them onto the shop uh, floor itself so yeah go and have a look um, there's loads of bits on there and as I said if you want to support me that would be a great way of doing so and yeah as I said I'll see you in my next video bye for now